Nigeria's growing population of over 200 million people is facing an ever-growing fuel crisis, despite its vast oil reserves. The shortage of refining capacity at existing oil refineries has been attributed to the main to be the main driver of the economic of the country's fuel crisis, which hampers the social economic development across the nation, thereby placing a high subsidy burden on the government. This is because Nigeria refineries have remained dormant for several years, despite on repeated turnaround maintenance, which have been done by successive governments on the facilities, a development that has long made Nigeria dependent on imported petroleum products. However, there has been increased interest from the Petroleum Ministry in recent times for modular refineries as a means of addressing the deficit of petroleum products. While well, joining me live from our Abuja studios to understand all of this he is an energy markets analyst, Mr. Idris Arua. Thank you so much for your time. It's great to have you on the show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tolu. Thank you for having me. Yes, let's start with the status of development at the $1.5 billion Port Harcourt Refinery Rehabilitation Project. This is a very important project. Help us through uh, the level of progress being made at the moment. Okay, it, it is very important. It's very important to start by stating that the Port Harcourt Refinery came on board in 1965 and with uh, a capacity of 350. A billion, I mean, barrel per day. That's around 50, 35,000 barrel per day capacity. And in uh, 1972, there was an upgrade to 60,000 barrel per day. And in 1985, when the current president was the military head of state, President Muhammad Buhari, he commenced the building of a new uh, potato refinery uh, with a capacity of 150,000 barrels per day. Now, giving you a cumulative of 210,000 barrels per day petroleum production from uh, the refinery. Now, because of negligence, and mismanagers over the past 30 years, because the, the, the new Osaka refinery came on board in 1989. And because of negligence and the lack of maintenance and mismanagement, the refinery became moribund. So what this government did, the present administration, was to try and rehabilitate and reconstruct the refinery to achieve at least the optimum capacity of 210,000 uh, barrel per day. Now, this they have done, uh, especially with the aid of the PIA, NMPC was able to acquire fund through equity contribution and a loan from African Exim uh, Bank in Cairo to start up this project. Now, the difference between what NMPC is doing right now and the previous turnaround maintenance, which has been going on uh, by the previous administration, is that instead of relying on solely government fund, like it's done in the past, this one, private uh, investor, private bank, like African Bank, is brought in to finance this project. And the project is being paid for based on a uh, project delivery timeline. Uh, delivery timeline. So uh, the project is in four phases. In the first one, the old refinery, which is by God's grace, uh, targeted to, to reach completion by this year, is targeted to produce about 54,000 barrel per day, which is 90% of its capacity. And all things being equal, with the way things are going, we also expect the phase two and three to be completed toward the end of this year or first quarter of 2024. So, uh, and 
by the end of 2024, the final phase of this project will be completed. So we should have the Otako refinery back online, producing at least 90% of its stock capacity, which is 189,000 barrels per day. So that is the focus of the refined rate. That is the status, the, the timeline uh, is being met, and hopefully by 2024, the refined will come back in full, in full production. Hmm. That would be a real good one. But there is huge global demand for energy in view of the recent geopolitical developments. Uh, I want to ask you, how is the federal government through the NNPC preparing to take advantage of value-additive refining services in the oil sector? You know, when you talk of value-additive uh, requirement, I'm talking of actually refining, because what we've been doing in the past is taking away our crude oil out of the country and bring refined product to the country. Now, NNPC target by 2026, it was achieved a, uh, a zero dependency on uh, importation of petroleum product and becoming net importer of this product. And now what is NNPC doing? NNPC is focusing on private sector investment in the crude oil. And that's because of what the present government is doing and the activity of the NMPC uh, leader management led by uh, Mr. Abele Kiari. For instance, the Otako refine in the Kotaka refinery complex, there's a new private refinery coming up, uh, owned by the uh, by the new that the African uh, refinery, Posaco Limited. Now, this refinery is a privately owned refinery collocating with the, Potac the NIPC oil refinery in the same environment, using the same uh, infrastructure that deliver crude oil to the Potaco refinery to service this refinery. And what is NIPC doing in this case? NFC has a 10% investment in that refinery. Similarly, NFC has a 20% investment in Dangote refinery, and NFC is also trying with time to also uh, rehabilitate and standardize uh, the operation of the Wari refinery and the Kaduna refinery. And there's also a Bodula refinery Water Smith, which is currently in Oweri. There, the Nigerian uh, Content and Monitoring Board has a 30% stake in that refinery. And we have the upcoming uh, Boa refinery in Akwaibom. So, and hopefully, NMPC will also want to invest in it to encourage other investors to put in their money and resources into ref oil refining within the Nigerian sphere, so that we don't have any need anymore to go out and bring refined oil. In fact, we should be able to refine excesses and start exporting refined oil. Hmm. I'm looking at how much dollars we'll save uh, when all of this uh, come to fruition, but why do you think the federal government is also incentivizing so much private sector investment in the sector? Uh, why do they want to sit at the table and how do you foresee these moves, of course, impacting on our revenue base? That remains very important. Hello? I don't think I'm hearing you. Oh, did you get that, Mr. Arua? Did you get my question? Hello, Mr. Arua, can you hear me? Hello? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay, we need to reconnect with um, Mr. Arua there. But very interesting conversation talking about uh, refining in Nigeria. We know that a lot of our forex, a lot of our, can you hear me, Mr. Arua? Can you hear me now? 
Okay, I was asking you that, why do you think the federal government is incentivizing so much private investment in the sector? And uh, what will be the impact of this on our national revenue base? Now, the, the, that is the essence of the NMPC investment in private sector, oil refining. There are two issues. One, at least NMPC will have a share of the revenue and profit being made by these uh, uh, private refineries. And that will grow, greatly increase our revenue base. If, if you notice, uh, by 2021, uh, NMPC, for the first time in uh, 44 years of its existence, declared a profit of about 287 billion naira. And as it is today, NMPC is the highest tax paying uh, company to the Nigerian government as of 2021. And not just that, all NMPC partners are among the first top 10 tax paying. Uh, in, to the Nigerian government. So you, can, you now see why NMPC is investing in these private sectors to ensure that they have something for Nigerians and Nigerians have a stake in this uh, new private investment. It's also good to note that because NMPC's fo focus is to first satisfy the domestic demand before exportation. So if NMPC is not on the table where decisions are taken, it becomes very, very difficult to, to enforce uh, the, 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 the need to meet the, the local uh, consumption demand. Because you're dealing with the private sector who have been stressed, who are more for profitability, and may not, uh, may work, may not go with the NMPC focus of satisfying the Nigeria uh, economy. And moreover, such investment will put NMPC as one of the largest uh, oil investors, not only in Nigeria, not only in Africa, and even in the world. Now, oh, let's wrap up on this note. We understand that there's a big development coming up, of course, this July. Uh, what really are the positives and what does this mean for Nigeria's oil and gas industry at this very critical time? In fact, I'm so happy to announce to Nigerians that on July 19, 2022, the President Muhammad Buhari will be un formally unveiling the NMPC as an independent, independent liability company. That is, NMPC will now stand on its own like every other private company according to the uh, Company and Ally Matters Act 2020. NMPC will have to, uh, all the bureaucracies or the bottleneck in decision taking will be taken off. NMPC will be self-accounting. NMPC will take decisions on their own. This aspect is part of the uh, Petroleum Industrial Act. And because of the focus of this government and the leader for NMPC, they've been able to achieve this uh, structure for NMPC in less than 18 months. By July 19, 2022, going forward, Nigeria, NMPC, is going to be so different. It will not be the usual NMPC. It will not be the NMPC that will have to dance to the tune of government. It will be an independent company, a profit-making company, a self-accounting company, and that will remove all the corruption because there will be proper auditing, activities, statements of account will be made public. So this is where the government is going, and that's where the focus of this government is. So the July 19th, 2022 uh, event will be a game changer in the history of the oil and gas sector in Nigeria, will be a game changer 
in the way and manner we earn uh, revenue from oil and gas. And I think that would be great for Nigeria and that would be great for NNPC itself. Before I let you go, you're so optimistic about this. You think that this will really help reshape our activities in the oil and gas industry in its totality and, of course, bring more revenue, which is important at this time. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I am optimistic because in, in reality, most of the challenges NMPC have faced in the past is government interference. If though we have won some of the best brains in this country at the top echelons of NMPC, look at the profile of the group managing director, Bele Kiari. Look at all the, the executive director. They are experienced. They've got worldwide. They work outside this country. They have worked with international conglomerates in the oil and service sector. But when they come home, because of government interference, politics, uh, government decisions, they can't put NMPC on the corporate ladder. They can't put NMPC where it should be. NMPC should be in the same uh, status as Shell Petroleum, Chevron, and much more. So, government interference, once we remove that, I believe that NMPC will work perfectly, the oil and gas sector in Nigeria will perform optimally I would deliver the goals to Nigeria. And moreover, with time, the NSU shares will be available for Nigerians to also invest and that also create wealth. And there's more job in the industry. Of course, I totally agree with that. Uh, when the shares become available. I uh, must thank you so much, Mr. Idris Arua. He's an energy markets analyst there, speaking around Nigeria's oil and gas industry, refining, and of course, uh, NNPC, as we expect that big day uh, moving on in the month. Thank you so much. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. And I hope after July 19, 2022, you'll become as optimistic as I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a journalist, but I'll follow up the issues and see if I would also believe. What are, we, are, we are all optimistic. We want the best for our country. <laughs>